Hello, Year 6. Welcome to your last lesson of the week and your first week over of isolation. So we'll be back before we know it, thank goodness. Our what for our English today is to understand the impact of audience and genre on our writing. Now, we've talked a lot about genre. That's the different styles of writing, the different types of category of writing. And the audience is different or they expect different things from you as a writer depending on what genre you're writing in, which leads us to our wolf. So maintaining consistent tense is going to be important, showing an awareness of tone that is appropriate for the genre, and beginning to write sentences to be used in our diary. So there are loads and loads of different genres of writing. That's just eight different ones that I happened to find a single picture of, so it was useful, um, but there are plenty more, just like there are loads of different genres in reading as well. And each have unique features, um, different things about them that make them different from all the other ones. But this two week unit that we're looking at, we're gonna be focusing on writing a diary. We're actually gonna be writing Francis's diary, the diary of Francis, the last one she writes before she goes missing. It's really important though, whenever we are completing a piece of writing, that you have to be aware of what genre it is that you're writing and therefore what features you need to be using. It's also really important that when you think about your writing, that you think about your reader. Who's actually going to be reading this piece of writing? And what are they going to be looking for when they're reading your text? What are they going to be hoping you do? Because different texts have different purposes. Here's a bit of a breakdown that might help you. So We've got different genres of writing. There's more than I've put there, but they're some of the main ones that we use, particularly in school. They're features and the, what the audience is expecting. So, for example, a poem. That should be written in prose. That means it's not written as a narrative. It's not written in full sentences. It isn't necessarily done in paragraphs. It's broken down differently. It's laid out in verses and it uses lots of figurative language. There it's features. There are other features, but there it's big ones. The audience, though, and this is the important column, this audience expectation here. When they're reading a poem, they expect to be entertained and they expect that poem to trigger some form of emotive response, some form of emotion, whether that's making them sad, making them laugh, making them happy. It will create some kind of emotion. In a narrative, they expect it to be, to a degree, informal. It should be engaging. The reader should be hooked when they're reading a narrative. And it should be really descriptive so the reader can lose themselves in the story. They can imagine that they're there. They can understand and see what you want them to understand and see. In a debate, it should be formal. It should be balanced, showing both sides. And it should be emotive. It should draw on what you as the writer believe. And you should show that passionately in the way that you write. A newspaper report should also be formal, but it should be factual and impartial. That means you shouldn't be giving your opinion in a newspaper report. It should very much just be the facts, the story, letting them speak for themselves without your opinion. And that's what the audience expects from that. They expect to be informed, but not to be told what to think. A non-chronological report should be factual, it should be engaging, and it should be interesting. People like to find out things, but they like to be entertained as they're doing it. They like to be kept interested. A diary, well, we've looked at that a lot. That's going to be really informal. It's going to use lots of colloquial language. It's going to be emotive because it's going to talk about what you think. A diary is an odd one. It's the only one of all of those genres of writing that are actually really not written to be read. A diary is written to get your thoughts and feelings into, allow you to sort of pour your heart out into that diary. You don't necessarily expect when writing an actual diary for that diary to be read by anyone other than you. So it's going to be really informal, really colloquial, might contain doodles around the edges, but it's very personal. And then persuasive writing, well, funnily enough, should contain persuasive language, will contain subjunctive form. It's done to try and persuade. Clues kind of in its name with persuasive writing. So hopefully that will be quite a useful thing for you to think about today. Now, that's pretty much all I've got to say. It's quite a short input today because it's your turn to have a go at this. It's your turn to have a go at writing your own sentences, to be putting in your own words what these different genres are. 
All the information you need other than what I've said can be found on your PDF sheets. Best of luck. Have a lovely weekend as well, because I won't be speaking to you now again until Monday. Remember to send in your work to myself or Miss Barrett. But for now, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you. Well, sadly, I won't see you. That's a slip of the tongue there. But I will speak to you on Monday. Goodbye.